Ann Wiggins with us, and she's wrote a marvelous book. At least if you're parenting, it's a marvelous book. I think I'm too old for that right now, Ann, but certainly I could still learn. Uh, bribing and rewarding, we've all been through that. You know, I'm going to bribe my dad or my mom. Or, and sure. what, do you, what do you say to that? Well, parents, I think, bribe without even processing what they're doing. And I hear it as, you know, if you'll sit real still for this meeting, then I'll take you to Dairy Queen when we're done. And to the parent, this is a great deal because I'm going to give you something great. The problem is for the child, number one, do they want that reward badly enough? I mean, maybe it's not good enough. Maybe they're tired of Dairy Queen and then it doesn't work. Or maybe they're just feeling ornery and they just don't care. Or maybe they can't remember what the treat is while they're sitting during the meeting. And so, so what you're doing is saying, do the right thing if there's a good enough reward at the end. But shouldn't we instill in our child that you do the right thing even if there is not a reward at the end? That's exactly what you need to do with your children. You do the right thing because it's the right, right thing. thing. And that's it. Now, later, if you want to reward behavior, you can do that. And that looks something like this. You know, I appreciated how you sat during my meeting today, just like I asked. This probably will never happen again, so don't expect it, but I feel like taking you to Dairy Queen. Let's go. And then it's and that a That reinforces that behavior at that it point. It does reinforce it, but it lets the child know that they did it for the right reason, you not, not, for, not for the Dairy Queen. No, I mean the, 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 the positive. The yeah, positive. Yeah. One finger touch, what's that? Oh, I love the one finger touch. I have a section in the book called mini tools and it's just lots of little tools that you can imply you know or uh, impose on your children just real quickly that are real helpful taking a small child into the store they want to touch everything well children learn in part by touching so what do we do don't touch don't touch don't touch because they'll break things and that is true yeah Tell them, you one finger touch, you can touch with one finger. I have yet to see a child smash something with one finger. They automatically get real delicate with it, and they can touch all these things with one finger. And so you don't have this battle in the store. They're touching, you're happy because they're not busting things. <laughs> the dinging principle, I have not a clue what that is. <laughs> that, that's because I made that up. <laughs> the dinging What's yours? rule. Did you, did you patent that? <laughs> no, 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 anyone can use it. Yeah. The dinging rule says that if you, well, let's, Think of um, air travel. You go traveling and you get charged, what, 20, 25 bucks for your luggage. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes you annoyed and it angers you. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough to keep you from flying. You still fly. Now, if they imposed a $100 fee on your luggage, you probably would think twice about going or the mode of transportation. They know this, so they're not going to put the, the fee too high. Mm -hmm. They'll just ding you enough just to annoy you, but mm -hmm. you, you keep coming back mm -hmm. and doing it. With parents, uh, the one minute per age timeout, particularly, it falls into this category. Does a child love it? No. They're annoyed. It, it's irritating to them to have to sit for two minutes. But it's not enough to stop the behavior from happening again. So we say rather than dinging your child, give them an impactful consequence. Never abusive, but raise the price tag on that. Think in terms of air luggage. You know, how much would I be willing to pay? Go above that number with your child so that your child next time says, ooh. I don't think I want to do Take that again. Take the cell phone and the computer. Absolutely, you can do that. You, That's a huge ding. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can also, if, if children are older, I would not do this with a young child because they can be scared, but go throw the breaker to their bedroom and say, when you master respect, uh, I'll turn your electricity back on. Mm -hmm. And you'll be in there from seven on every night doing, you know, whatever in the dark. Have fun. How did you learn all this? Was it because the way your mother raised you and now Very you're raising much. your children the, the same much. way? And, and I want to highlight this because I think parents underestimate the, uh, the role that you can have in future generations simply by doing the job really well with your own children. My parents were awesome. Their parents were awesome. I, we have these generations of people who simply use common sense. Not the not nuclear physicists. I mean, none of us are, are hugely intelligent. I think we're pretty average. But wisdom, which is very different from common intelligence. Sense. Mm -hmm. Common sense. Looking for things that work. And when things don't work, going, okay, what else can I do? Rather than just, I, I've got a strong willed one. I don't know. There's just nothing I can my, do. My friend is such an advocate and a supporter of object lessons when it comes to raising children. Get their attention. Yes, get their attention with an object lesson. I think any time that you can connect 
what they did, whether good or bad, with the results of that behavior. That's how real life works. Mm -hmm. in, in real life, if you drink excessively, um, you don't get a traffic ticket. I mean, that's possible, right. but you, you become addicted to alcohol. You have an alcohol addiction. Those are very um, connected. If you have um, crazy, wild, unprotected sex, you will get STDs yes. and, and pregnant. Uh, and so these things happen in real life where no, consequences do and we behaviors risk go that, together. Do we take something that we see, do we, when we see our child headed for something that is a minor. Let, let's talk a minor situation. Uh, I, th I think you take that risk of letting that go through. That, that mm. is an object lesson. Um, a minor situation. Let that child continue on that path to a minor consequence and then they see what Absolutely. happened. Seeing is believing. That's right. Now I know the ball is in the sun's court right now because, <laughs> the, because they're heading yes. uh, up against the very tough Los Angeles Lakers, but what does that mean <laughs> as far as the your book your means? Yeah, yes, the ball's in your court. This is another one of the tools in here that just work great. Um, when you're dealing with a child and things seem to be spiraling out of control, and I think if any parent has a child with a modicum of will, <laughs> they know what this is like. You're dealing with something and it's getting worse by the second as the child is correct reading out of control. What you say is the way that you handle this right now determines what happens next. So in the case of a child, um, I had an experience at our church where I had to tell a child because he had belched in my face after I had asked him to please stop belching, that he was going to miss out on game time. And this was a fourth grader and he just completely lost his mind, was just thrashing and screaming. And I just quietly said, and the way that you handle this right now will determine whether you only lose game time tonight or whether you will also lose game time next week. And he just turned it right off. <laughs> they, they have a reason to behave themselves because whether their situation stays where it is or gets far mm -hmm, worse mm -hmm. is dependent on how they're handling mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. themselves. So you give them a little bit of control of oh, the situation. Yeah. They have yeah. to make choices. They absolutely have to. Where can we find your book? Well, my website is parentingfromtheheights.com. It's also available on Amazon, if you can remember the title. Parentingfromtheheights.com is probably easiest, but yeah. either way. And Anne, why don't you give us just a very quick insight into the Heights Church, which is right here in Prescott. Yes, my husband, Lee Wiggins, is pastor over at Heights Church, which is just off of Highway 89. And we have services Saturday at 6 o'clock p.m. and then Sunday 8, um, 9.30 and 11. And it's just a great place to go mm. and just hear the same kind of common sense we've been talking about, just brought from the Bible, non the, the Word of non God. Uh, Non-denominational, yes. Mm -hmm. I.e. Parenting from the Heights. Yes. Thanks and thank you. Me. And thank you. Great, great advice thank for you. those that are parenting right now or maybe becoming parents. You're lazy. You want to lose weight. You know you should exercise. How do you psych yourself up? We're going to talk about that.